We live in an embattled world, and the sooner we come to terms with it and take cover, the better for us. Hello, my name is Chido. So glad to have you here today. Our topic today is understanding how the Holy Spirit fights for us. There is war going on between the forces of heaven and the devil and his cohorts. There is war going on over the souls of men and women. There is war. Psalm 91 says, Arrows fly by day, pestilence walk in darkness, and destruction at noonday. Different arrows are flying. Even stray arrows that are not meant for certain people hit them. Why? Because of ignorance and a carefree attitude. But thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph. So, we must understand how the Holy Spirit fights for us. There are two kingdoms. It's either you are in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of the devil. If for adventure you are still in the kingdom of the devil, scripture tells us in Psalm 74, 20, that the dark places of the earth is full of the habitation of cruelty. So, there's cruelty in this world. Cruelty. So we need to take cover. And the only way we can take cover is moving over to the kingdom of God. God has translated every child of God through Jesus from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So, we need to be on the right side of the battle that is going on over the souls of men. Therefore, we should have an understanding of how the Holy Spirit fights for us. Number one, he is the spirit of wisdom that wins the war. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. Before any army goes to war, they would always plan and strategize. But without wisdom, it is impossible to plan and strategize properly to win the battle or to win the war. In scripture, we are told of a little city with few men and a great king came up against that little city. But in that little city, there was a poor wise man, and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. The preacher concluded that wisdom is better than strength. A strong person can spend years beating around the bush and achieve nothing. But when he embraces the wisdom of God, he begins to move in the right direction and makes progress cheaply. You cannot win the war on your own. You need the help of God. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom that strategizes in the battle over the souls of men. He does all the planning to enable us win the war. Remember the account in scripture when the Philistines wanted to invade the territory of Israel. David inquired of the Lord and God gave him the strategy to win the battle. When the Philistines regrouped and came up against Israel again, David did not assume anything. He went back to God to inquire for the strategy to use this time. And God gave him the strategy. Every believer has the Holy Spirit residing inside of him. So please check with him first before embarking on any project. Number two, he is also the spirit of servanthood. 
He is the spirit that empowers us to serve God. God has given unto us power, but it is only those that are willing to serve that can manifest the power of God. Remember, it was when the 70 went out to serve that they manifested the power that Jesus Christ gave unto them. Jesus said, I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So, we are loaded with so much potential, so much power. You may not know or experience this power until you are willing to serve. So, my dear, do not shy away from responsibilities wherever you find yourself, because with great responsibility comes great power to change, to transform, and to make things better. Number three, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of vengeance in silencing the wickedness of the wicked. Psalm 7, 9 says, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. In Isaiah 61 verse 2, we saw that one of the mandates of the Holy Spirit is to proclaim the vengeance of our God. In Exodus 12:12, 12, 12, God said, I will execute vengeance. Now, from all these scriptures, how can the wickedness of the wicked come to an end? This can not only be this can be done through the vengeance of God, and the Holy Spirit is the spirit of vengeance in silencing the wickedness of the wicked. Number four, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy that establishes divine presence. Remember, God inhabits the praises of his people. So when you are praiseful, you are joyful. And God inhabits a praiseful, joyful environment. So, quickly, let's give you an advanced tip to create joy. Are you ready? Make a gratitude list. No matter your circumstances, there is always something to be grateful for. So make a list of all the things you are grateful for and you will discover joy filling your heart. Romans 8.31 says, If God be for us, who can be against us? When you create an atmosphere of joy around you, this attracts God. And when where God resides, no matter what comes up against you, God will fight for you and secure the victory. So, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of joy. Ask him to create joy in your heart and be willing to man let him manifest that joy. So, even though the Bible says in 1 John 5, 19, we know we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The Bible also says in Psalm 105, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Therefore, 